Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, many people are still joining. So, but uh, shall we start? So far, twenty-five have joined. Uh, yeah, let us start. So now we have with us Mr. D. Barman, Dev Tanu Barman. He is the founder and CEO of Aqua Doctor Solutions. He has done his masters in fisheries and from Ghent University, Belgium, and he then established in the India the Aqua Doctor Solutions uh, because he is from the private entrepreneur and uh, has lots of farmers interaction. He will be better able to say what is going on the farmers' condition, field condition. How they are doing tackling the problem as well as the what are the drugs they are common drugs they are using. So uh, I may may I now request Mr. Dev Tanu Barman to start his lecture. Okay, sir. Very good afternoon to everyone. And uh, uh, I think this is the first time I am speaking a platform of Sifri Barakpur. So for that, I like to uh, I am thankful to also the organizing committee to give me this platform to share the. farmers view that's why also i put my topic that i'll be sharing the how the farmers interact mostly on the field uh, though we have lots of innovative technology but most of the time farmer when they face lots of issues in the in terms of disease management they uh, really get you know they look for a best solution as a quick uh, end so in my uh, presentation Though I will be covering many of my uh, previous speaker in the morning, they have already taught about parasitic disease, uh, bacterial disease, and many other diseases. But I will also try to make it more similar way to summarize as a farmer point how you can identify, how you can uh, know that my fish, my fish is diseased, uh, or my I have a healthy fish. So I will not waste much time. I'll go for the directly the presentation. and uh, in my presentation i have two parts one part is understanding the uh, fish uh, disease management another part i am trying to address the commonly occurring fish diseases in the eastern region and the england waters mostly and the last part also i will talk about something on you know uh, like uh, different kind of diseases and different kind of solution which is available in the uh, with us so as sir give my uh, introduction Uh, i am basically from tripura and right now also for this session i am in tripura uh, so i am uh, addressing the session from tripura only and i run a company named aqua doctor solution uh, we have in india this is different branches in different states even outside of the country also and also we have recently got from uh, government of india manage an nftd uh a aoc aqua one center where we do disease i uh, diagnosis soil and uh, water testing facilities at the farmers level and at also lab level so let's me uh, start my presentation and uh, once i done the presentation i will also have 5 to 10 minutes time to listen my uh, like the people who are uh, listening to me if they have any more questions further on that aspects is it visible sir yeah visible okay perfect so let's start about uh, fish health management with farmers perspective and uh, in my first slide itself we are trying to show uh, different kind of diseases in the background also we are trying to show a very healthy environment so how we can manage a healthy environment in our aquaculture system so i will try to point out some of the key aspects as a farmer you should know uh, is a fish health management is a term used in aquaculture to describe management practices which are designed to prevent fish disease in simple terms as a farmer perspective i will say try to make your pond environment very hygienic very good condition then disease outbreak things will not be there even it is for pond is for a cemented tank or it may be a bioflock system try to keep your environment as much possible good condition once fish gets sick so make it slide show mode 
sorry once uh, fish make, gets ma make it slide show mode sir it will be full screen is it possible to make full screen sir uh, in my laptop i can see it is full full screen okay 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 then continue then continue okay so once uh, we understand that fish get sick then we have to understand that that fish has to be take care, taken care in consideration of preventive measure successful fish health management begins with prevention of the disease so many times uh, when farmer get disease disease doesn't come in single day or maybe disease doesn't come in the winter or disease doesn't come only in the summer time disease there every time in our ecosystem when the number of unbeneficial bacteria or unhealthy conditions prevail much more better than our good condition then the disease outbreak comes so monthly basis we should follow some sort of preventive measure management in terms of pond in terms of tanks in terms of any other ecosystem where we are growing fish prevention of fish disease is accomplished through good water quality management good nutrition and sanitation excuse yes excuse me the slides are not moving we are still in the first slide sir i am in the first slide only sir okay thank you i am on the first slide only i am trying to address each point so uh, my uh, the part i was discussing is the prevention of the disease accomplished through good water quality management and nutrition and sanitation most of the time we have better water quality in the farmers pond but the feed what we are giving to the, our fish is not in good condition maybe the storage of the feed is not in proper condition maybe the feed the way we are uh, dispersing in the system is not the proper even the sanitation aspect most of the time we made our pond more eutrophicated system where proper sanitation should be taken care of every month maybe 30 days or 45 days interval or even 60 days interval this has to be maintained then the fish constantly but in the potential pathogen including bacteria fungi and parasites that we know that's why i told we have to keep very healthy environment in our pond system daily observation of fish behavior the feeding activity is very important because we cannot close down our eyes and do fish farming it may be anything if you rear a fish inside your aquarium or maybe you grow your fish in a bigger tank the pond always do proper observation in the morning say 6 to 8 even in the evening 5 to 7 that time fish will show if any un uh, healthy behavior you can see or maybe the any kind of you know they will show some sort of behavioral changes in them if they have any issues in the pond if the treatment is indicated it will be more successful if it is implementation done in the early of the course so most of the time what you face in the farmers pond when disease outbreak as very uh, top level then farmers contact us ask for solution but the beginning they are just looking for do some sort of treatment or maybe water exchange or maybe potassium uh, permanganate bath but when the disease is not controlled by their own way then they come to us for the water quality parameter to be checked check and the disease fish diagnosis should be done so if there is a disease in the very beginning itself you should consult the institutions like cfe or maybe icn institutes or kvts or the aqua consultants which is available in the close to you significance of the disease is always lies between these three systems okay i will go through the my next slide so disease is a uh, if fish uh, suffer from disease a huge loss to the aquaculture farming sector as well as in the economic in terms of overall your production concern and even in the fish production overall in considering the whole country so disease outbreak should be controlled through proper management practice this is something i like to show how the relationships of environment between fish and pathogens is happens this is a first conditions where if the relationship excuse me balanced, excuse me sorry your slides, the slides are not, are not moving we are still in the first sorry slide to interrupt. the name. slides are not moving your name slide is we are still in that only yeah now now it is moving now you are jump to the third slide fourth slide but the second and third we never saw it the second and the third yeah so should i show like this it is visible now now it is coming 
No, yeah, sir. It's if it's coming now. like this, then I will just show it like this way only. Right, right, right. Perfect. Yeah, this is yeah, this will be visible, visible now. Better. Right. Can you go to the second slide, please, again? Second, third. It was my first slide where I was explaining the whole things between the relationships. Then this is was my third slide where I was trying to explain about host pathogen environment. Okay, and this is the fourth slide where I like to show you how the relationships between fish environment and pathogen works together. Okay, so this is the first condition where if the relationship is balanced, my fish. or our fish will be good health good color and good growth we can see if it is marginal between you know some disease outbreak sometime is happen in the whole culture process by for which our fish growth may occur you know some fish will be bit uh, good growth some fish will not be in proper growth even after doing lots of fish management practice in good management practice in the pond and even also good feeding management and sometimes it also happens that our fish due to this climate environment fish and the pathogen this three relationships together our fish not growing even we that there is a disease outbreak every 3 or 4 months interval okay so these are the three conditions where we are basically face at farmer levels but we are always looking for such kind of relationships where our environment is good our feeding management is good better water quality management also we are following so then based on that this correlation we can looking for a good growth in our fish in the later on so factors affecting our fish health basically in farmers spawn i will try to put some of the ideas which farmers are facing basically at farmers level one is temperature changes i will try to give one small examples most of the time maybe in the bigger pond we may not face these issues temperature changes but smaller sector like a cemented tank or cisterns or maybe you are doing bioflock systems or maybe other kind of systems if temperature fluctuations uh, are there uh, in the winter period of time fish uh, shows uh, lethargic movement fish shows lots of disease outbreak due to temperature changes even in the pond also sometimes we saw algal blooms comes up due to temperature changes issues where there is a issues of eutrophication in the bottom of the soil handling stress is a very big issues in the fish disease most of the time the farmers facing because whenever farmers get the seeds from different sources different locations due to transportation stress due to handling stress fish initially in 3 to 4 days they show lots of mortalities in a, any kind of environment we are looking for we are talking about transportation transportation also we we lots of time we face that when we are taking the fish from pond to end customers up to the market the even if some fishes also there in the life conditions sometimes it shows also due to stress or due to heavy accommodation in the small areas of the space fishes start also dying they lose their you know freshness sometime after period of time in a long transportation distance water quality is a major issues most of the fish pond what we have we never follow the scientific approach of bmps best management practice for which water quality due to water quality lots of disease outbreak starts coming up okay pollution is very important part pollution may be human intervention pollution may be you know unknowingly you are doing overfeeding uh, you are doing over manuring so those kind of aspects also leads to disease outbreak even high density farming most of the time if you see in the eastern region we are always observe that the stocking density what we have to maintain in our standard uh, per acre or per hectare stocking density we are not following we are always looking for very big production in small area without proper water quality management without uh, proper feed management without proper aeration management for which this high density culture system always shows a very you know high risk uh, issues most of the time during the production cycle then feed management always because most of the time if you consider today though we we have lots of feed companies and people are now much more aware about you know allocated commercial feed to be used in the farming 
but most of the time till today in the very rural areas people are engaged into feed ingredient management farming system feed ingredient management farming system i like to say that maybe they are just using drb they are just using uh, master oil cake they are just using dio uh, your groundnut oil cake so that kind of things they are using like just they are dumping they are not doing even proper ratio they are maintaining so they are just trying to add those kind of ingredients thinking that that ingredients will be act as a fit for my fish without making into a you know balanced feed breeding cycles uh breeding cycles if you see today most of the fish what we, we were producing or whatever fish we are getting even within the country or out of the country there is a huge huge issues of inbreeding and the generations what we are talking about or the, the generation what we are growing even the disease is not uh, disease you know resistant they are disease susceptible by the way we are producing the seeds in a long way some of the uh, symptoms by which we can understand the our fish is good one is uh, fin and tail should be intact takes feed uh in time takes feed in time i mean to say that whenever you feed the fish the fish should take the fish should finish the feed within say 20 minutes to 30 minutes not like this morning you feed the fish evening till your feed is available in the system never come to the edges of the pond always a healthy fish will be playing inside the water they will not never come to the side of the corner never seen the surface of the pond is very difficult because uh, when, whenever the fish will be healthy they will not show such kind of things and whenever you know the fish is a good health condition they will always show lots of behavior of jumping they will be playing around in the evening and the afternoons okay no wounds on the body we can see in a healthy fish shining of the natural color we can see also that by this way we can understand that this is a healthy fish even if you look for a fish seed also try to understand try to see this kind of parameter should be your fish seed should carry in a bigger way uh, most of the things what a disease fish shows uh, is like fish and fins and tail should be necrotic this kind of things we can see uh, loss of natural color even uh, woods on the body uh eye should be enlarged and exothelix so the eye will be start showing bulging uh breath with mouth uh, they will show gasping nature or oxygen depletion kind of situation uh, abdomen and the colon filled with fluids okay uh, heavy mucus on the body and the gills we can see loss of appetite aging fish comes to the surface the skin slowly very open and sometimes also fish show you know they bend their body in the opposite direction and start doing it loss of stability and hemostasis issues will also come during this uh, you know if the fish is not healthy i try to make one you know cycle like how we can uh, uh, make we can divide disease into following parameters how fungal disease bacterial disease parasitic disease eus epigenetic alternative syndromes then nutritional disease deficiency problem environmental problem protozoan parasite helminth parasite crustacean parasite i think most of these chapters uh in morning session uh, uh different uh, uh senior scientists and the speakers they have addressed but i will try to just address few of them in one one slides the fungal disease which we can see very common in farmer field during winters also especially is the septolegnia okay this uh, this is also called as a uh, skin fungus cotton wool disease and water mold such kind of things yeah, and we can observe it very rapidly in farmers pond even in the you know if you are growing fish in a very concrete area or very you know uh, defined water bodies we can see in a small areas with high density if you go through in farming models okay uh, there are some of the uh things are uh, like uh, how we can understand fish will uh, we can see that microscopic examination is also there gill necrotic things will also be there in the body we can see white white patches also over the with the period of time i'll show you some of the photos uh this kind of things we can see around even in the gills also we can observe most of the time this kind of issues this thing also we can see uh in most of the fishes i also show later on some of the farmers feel photos how the cotton wool disease we can identify 
most of the farmers what they do they do basically you know uh, formalin treatment or the salt treatment okay uh, and most of the time some farmers they use also some sort of uh, you know sanitizer which is commonly available in the market from different brands and different company then another is uh, aspect of gill rot okay brinkomy so in the gill rot we can see that uh, the, the normal gill color will not be there this will be you know rotten and the uh, lots of yellow color fluid uh, things also we can see around and the, due to this fish start dying any time even the water quality also good uh, even uh, uh, all the parameters uh, aspect is good and this kind of uh, problem with the gill uh, rot issues are very common in the high density city carp farming models most of the uh, areas in the west bengal treatment if you talk about in the treatment we can uh, understand that organic matter things whatever is present in the pond bottom need to be taken care of stocking as density should be reduced uh, and also liming uh, or formalin treatment sometimes farmers they use melachite green also in acceptable range uh, so salt treatment uh sodium chloride applications also farmers they do but sometimes uh, uh they use some sort of other chemicals also which is not uh, uh, recommended by the fisheries fraternity but to to control the you know the fish biomass they also use uh, lots of antibiotics sometimes but which is not recommended unless until you understand the significant of it then we we can use it in the mild dose then some of the bacterial disease uh, one is uh, tail rot fin rot which we can see very really commonly uh, pseudomonas then we is a abdominal dropsy uh, is a through aeromonas plexibacter culminaris is also we can see most of the time in the most of the carp species uh, in the eastern region tail rot fin rot you can see there is a uh, you know uh, the tails are not in the proper shape uh and sometimes even it, it also have been observed that from the tails the disease start even the body was also going out of basically improve the ph and the water hardness then another is uh, abdominal drop dropsy dropsy you can see there is a swollen belly of the fish they stop eating they sometimes they show you know uh, the opposite direction of the swim and all kind of things we can observe Okay. okay. Uh, then there is another one is uh, uh, we can see the uh, red disease, uh, which is very common uh, in uh, our West Bengal because red disease we can observe most of the farming uh, where there is an intensive farming going on. Say example, Moina, Pingla, Shobong, Rajnagar, Ramtara. Hubli, Bardhaman, many of the places we have observed that this kind of issues are more common even in summer time, even in winter time. This time, uh, uh, when this red disease comes, initially the red disease then it comes with mixed infection. Sometimes when we can observe, uh, you know, dropsy here. If you press the scales, you can find the fluids are coming out, eyes are bulging out, whole body start, you know, this kind of reddish things you can see. So sometimes red disease it starts with one aspect, then it's Start going to meet infection kind of structure event. Okay. Application of potassium permanganate, good water quality management, then uh, sanitation with proper sanitizer. We can use even BKC. You can use uh, formal dehyde, glucal dehyde, and also iodine combination. And the uh, infected fish we can remove out of the prawn. And also sometimes we can use with uh, caramycin kind of medicines. Also we can use. columnar is flexibacter uh, yeah, most of the time it happen to the uh, rohu fish and there is a, always a huge mortality comes due to this uh, disease and uh, it also observed uh, in the gills and also in the fins okay most of the time it has been observed the farmers feel most of the gills get affected more than the fins so gills uh, once the gills start affecting fish start dying without any uh, notice Uh, even in a very good uh, environment, very good water quality, we can see the huge mortality of the fish. Okay. 
ट्रीटमेंट रिड्यूस स्टॉकिंग डेंसिटी वाटर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट पॉन्ड बॉटम मैनेजमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी शुड यूज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सेनिटेशन देन सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो वाटर प्यूरिफायर देन वी कैन यूज सम गुड प्रोबायोटिक आल्सो सोइल एंड वाटर सम टाइम ओटीसी आल्सो वी कैन यूज डीसी यू कैन यूज एंड ऑल्सो इंफेक्टेड फिश वी कैन रिमूव देन सम सॉर्ट ऑफ पैरासाइटिक डिजीज वन इज टू वन पैरासाइट क्रस्टेशियन पैरासाइट एंड द हेलमिन पैरासाइट okay uh, i will just show few of them that uh, example uh, one is the uh, itch uh, which is very common during the winter in the confined small water bodies areas uh, trichodina also we can observe sometime not very commonly but mixobolus infection is very common during the heavy stocking density of fry and fingerling in a nursery pond management is very common and we can observe it most of the time in the eastern part of region where we can see this, this kind of issues are very prominent in the uh, system uh, in the age we can see heavy mucus secretion will come gills necrosis will come even we can see white kind of patches over the gills over the period of time this kind of things we can observe there we can use melachite green which work very good in the gills and also we can reduce stocking density and we can do proper water quality management then mixobolus uh, mixobolus infestation more comes in the gills then they uh, have a issues of you know uh, they stop eating feeding they lose the appetite and all the uh, the whole uh, gills and the elementary canal uh, get affected with this disease so this kind of things we can see in uh, bengali uh, most of the time uh, this mixobola is called uh, uh, some kind of you know rice puff like movie uh, those kind of things comes to the gills and it's very common during a heavy uh, loading if you have uh, during the nursery management uh, where you are producing fry to fingerling advanced uh, yearling events okay the big size fish in katlas also you can observe it more uh, rapidly so you can use melachite green or even We can reduce the stocking density, and we also uh, we can use theoretically, you know, uh, proper uh, probiotic and the water quality management aspect we should look for. This kind of things also we can see in the gills. Then crustacean parasites is more like argulas and the larnia, and uh, if you talk uh, about about these two diseases. If you see today in the eastern part of the region, we are produce uh, lots of fish, okay? But the huge problem of our industry in the eastern part of the region is the parasitic issues, okay? Though there are many companies have there are many products that there are farmers using many of ways and all, but they are still today they are not able to control it out. Even a product is good this year, next year that product is not good. There is a huge infestation issues of this. Uh, parasitic diseases in the most of the high density intensive carp farming areas of bengal and the surrounding eastern region of india and uh, if you see these are the uh, uh, argulus fish lice i will show you some of the treatment procedures in the later on how they are doing it uh, people follow lots of methodology they try to use cyvermethrin and then uh, uh, one to two people and new one and yeah. many other company uh, product which i am not able to here mention it uh, even uh, they try to reduce the organic uh, load i will try to tell you one some uh, one small suggestion from farmer side is like always try to clean your pond periphery area no bushes should be there no jungle should be there always try to maintain a very good water quality very shiny uh, sunlight should be penetrated in the water column those kind of aspect you try to manage then at least we can reduce their growth cycle structure of the lice uh epizootic arthritis syndrome is a uh, is a very big problem also during winters we can observe it many of the farmers uh, face a huge loss and when uh, this uh, ulceration comes that fish also will come the market farmers are not ready to buy so that time we can use sanitation we can use uh, bkc with iodine brocaldehyde formaldehyde and uh, uh, even bromine based solution also we can use it while well, we can do proper lining sometimes we can use cfax cfax also shows very good result on this so this kind of diseases are are there but most of the time we have to do preventive measure by observing them the disease outbreaks predictably 
some nutritional disease uh, is lordosis uh, is due to cap and magnesium uh, cataract the eyes methionine vitamin a necrotic feel and uh, tail uh, rot due to vitamin a and c fatty liver fatty liver we can observe most of the time in the even in the bigger root stock even okay so that time also you have to understand it then blood spot in the fish uh, fish base in the body you can observe i will show some of the photos lordosis and the cataract this is a from farmer's field environmental some disease it uh, it's more prevailing to the eutrophicate uh, water where you know uh, water depth is very high say 20 feet 15 feet there we have a issues come with ammonia toxicity and the high nitrate issues okay in the time uh, liming and the uh, probiotic application basically the bio remediators works very good so that kind of system so we always try to go with probiotic based management practices this is because to, because of high ammonia toxicity we can observe this kind of issues most of the time in the fish ponds oxygen deficiency i will show a very good photo in the later on uh, we will see that fish uh, uh, they feel very stress excessive mucus secretion also starts and fish also show very un, uh, uncomfortable movement in the water column gaspic in nature we can see is also indicates some of the useful chemicals to be used for the control of fish disease uh, one is formalin one is benzene chromium chloride okay then uh, potassium permanganate malachite green ectiflavin zeolite different types we can use uh, there are powder form there are granular form then there are probiotic based zeolites also water soil probiotic should use otc most of the time people use a common uh, antibiotic for the uh, uh, disease is heavy disease uh, heavy mortality of the fish is there but unless until if you do proper water quality management we don't have to use even otc some of the disease this is due to oxygen depletion issues in a, a system in bioflow this is also a, a photos which indicates that you know uh, there is a high ammonia problem was there and a high organic load was there by which it also start you know septicemia issues start with bacterial infections then this infectious also we have observed there are uh, red uh, diseases observed most commonly if there is no proper water quality management in the system uh gill issues then we have dropsy gill uh, necrosis and we have ulcerations or even the us if you talk, talk about some of the problems some of the solutions like uh, this in different company they have different kind of products in the market even for uh, arbutus larnia acanthocephala there are many types this type of also products now we market available some of the disease which farmer face commonly i like to show in a very uh, quick throw is a us disease is septicemia is a argulus the argulus is a very huge issues in the farming the systems in eastern region then ulceration we have we have dropsy we have something like this also we can observe if you go in the market you find some of the fish they show excessive secretion of the mucus over their gills and the gills start rotten and the, the whole body can cover with the gills uh, this mucus excessive mucus secretion we also call it the gill mycosis okay these are the very common disease which farmer face uh, uh, in the uh, systems in the pond in the maybe rs in bio flock in cement tank even in hatchery okay but you know every there are to be measure good water quality management and the good feeding management along with the management practice should be in the proper standard so like for that even we have we have come up also some of the uh, uh, how to uh, keep your fish in a healthy and good environment this kind of publication also we are coming up from our aqua one center funded by nfdb uh, managed uh, government of india so this kind of farmer tips also we are giving uh, through different social media and also through different kind of publications where okay uh, 
we have also a one aqua one center uh, where we you can get all kind of uh, trainings all kind of water quality management aspect even all kind of uh, input things water needed for better water fish farming and also we have a disease diagnostic lab if any time any disease problem you face it or disease and other problems uh, those people want to connect to us they can connect to us through aqua doctor solution we have website we have uh, facebook page we also have youtube channel on the same name and uh, we have our office in jadavpur kolkata we also have our aqua one center office also in jadavpur kolkata so any time any person can visit us uh, we are always open for our service thank you so much i think uh, i i try to summarize my information in a such way that in a small way i can inform you more about the things what we are doing even what farmers are facing and how we are helping them out thank you so much thank you babun ji now participants any queries or clarifications from participants हेलो हम कॉलेज फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र Along with that, we can try to feed the fish 
for seven to ten days. Then, उसके बाद जो आप लोग सेलिब्रेटर और एंटीबायोटिक देके जो स्ट्रेस लेकर फैक्टर क्रिएट हुए हैं। नहीं वन में हैं वो नहीं वन जब विंडा में इंटरेस्टिंग है। आप तो फीड के साथ दे पाएंगे ना जब तुम पानी में सर रोगी जो फीडिंग है पानी में एंटीबायोटिक के जो डोज है ना बहुत सारे आदमी के बहुत सारे टाइप के डोज है आपको हम जो डोज बताएंगे वो आपके सिस्टम में बायर नहीं तो ये इनफॉर्म कल्चर बुझ जाएगा इनफॉर्म कल्चर इन बात को कल्चर में इंटर में भी मच्छी भी खा लेता है तो ये नहीं आता है टैंक कल्चर में पर पॉन में जब 25 डिग्री के नीचे जाता है 26 डिग्री के नीचे जब जाता है तो फिर खाना बंद कर देता है मच्छी तो ऐसे वक्त में उन्हें मैंने देखा हो कि आइंडोवाइट का अगर ओरल देते हैं तो बहुत जल्दी वो सॉर्ट आउट हो जाता है वो ठीक हो जाती है बट अगर आइंडोवाइट को ओरल नहीं दिया तो उनको बचाना लगभग जब तक वो आइंडोवाइट नहीं जाएंगे उनके पेट में तब तक वो बच नहीं पाता तो ऐसे वक्त में क्या किया जाए ऑर्गेनिक लोड है उसका भी मात्रा बढ़ाते हैं साथ में उस टाइम में हम लोग कुछ प्रॉपर वाटर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट नहीं करते नहीं वाटर एक्सचेंज करते नहीं वाटर एक्सचेंज नया पानी डालते भी हैं और नहीं तो कोई प्रोबायोटिक की भी यूज करते हैं उस टाइम में साथ जेन परसेंट के सलूशन आप यूज कर सकते हैं क्योंकि जेन परसेंट हमारे एक्वाकल्चर के लिए अभी तक भी अलाउबल है हम लोग फार्म लेवल में यूज कर सकते हैं मे बी हर दिन यूज करने की जरूरत आप बोल रहे हैं कि एंटीबायोटिक पानी में डालना है ऐसा बोल रहे हो हाँ पानी में सर पानी में घोल के हम लोग दे सकते हैं जहाँ पर फीड ना खाएं नहीं तो ऐसा तो मैंने लास्ट टाइम आप तो बात हुई थी ना इस बारे में पर वो नहीं हो रहा था ना पीपी भी दिए थे सब भी दिए थे इस कारण से मैं सर शुरू में आपको बोलना हूँ प कैलकुलेशन होते हैं इसलिए एक बार के कैलकुलेशन ना बोल के मैं बोला हूँ नॉर्मल गुड मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिस आपको फॉलो करने के लिए सर सर बट लास्ट टाइम जब भी इशू आता मैं आपसे बात भी किया था बट वो शॉर्ट आउट नहीं कर पाए जब जब तक मच्छर ने फेट खाना चालू नहीं किया था तो बट जब वो खाना जब मॉडरेट हो गया कि बट तो उनके पेट में मैं दे सका तो वो ऑटेट हो गई और इसके पहले भी मैंने बहुत बार मतलब ये बैक्टर इन्फेक्शन फेस किया बट जब भी एंटीबॉडी का पसंद देते हैं और नहीं तीन दिन सलूशन है जहाँ पर फीड ना खाएं हम सब ठीक है मगर वाटर में के डाइल्यूशन रेट आपके पास प्रॉपर होना चाहिए तभी वो फीड सर आपको इसे जल्दी मिलेगा बट सर लास्ट टाइम में अपन ने ट्राई भी किए थे वो तो नहीं हुआ था इससे इससे यही प्रॉब्लम तो कंट्रोल डिजेस इन विंटर जब मोस्टली फीड नहीं खाता है तब काफी मुश्किल है 
So, any other question?
So one of our aspect of this uh, uh, cage culture is disease management in cage culture, and what is uh, investigated, identified uh, globally as well as in India, basically in India. So uh, uh, if we put the number of cages being installed in India is around twenty thousand, uh, led by mostly led by uh, Jharkhand, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Telangana, and uh, many states are coming forward. So in this presentation, uh, we'll go next. Uh, very brief. What are the major species being cultured in cages? Are Pangasius, Monosex tilapia, Atropolis, uh, demand, especially in Kerala, is very good. So, this is uh, especially in uh, Nagpur side, in Maharashtra side. And Pabda or Bimiculitis, which is Pabda, but mostly Pabda is a culture. We have also standardized it, uh, stocking density, everything. और इसके साथ साथ सिंगी देन मेजर एंड माइनर सम ऑफ द मेजर एंड माइनर कार कभी कभी आप देखेंगे इस कुछ कुछ लोग ऑर्नामेंटल फीस को भी इसमें कल्चर करने लगे हैं नेक्स्ट एस्पेक्ट सो देयर आर थ्री ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज वेयर द हेल्थ इज ड्यू टू दैट हेल्थ इज गेटिंग कॉम्प्रोमाइज्ड वन इज द and environment itself and third is the microflora or ki mostly pathogenic in nature hote hain unke karan hota hai so agar dekhenge agar quality version dekhenge aur dekhe to bacteria virus fungus and parasites hai in addition to that if we don't give a good nutrition a healthy nutrition a that which everything which is required by fish then it uh, results in the uh, disease development next so uh, my earlier speaker was also explain about this one just i will take a small very small time we know that but uh, is uh, healthy surviving well growing well then we call it is a system which is in equilibrium where for an animal or an aquatic animal uh, which is actually guided by three components uh, host pathogen and environment so three are in constant equilibrium then fish is growing well if not if anything if anyone uh, grows uh, over others then it uh, result in uh, uh, compromise uh, compromise in growth as well as survival of the culture so here it may be pathogen it may be environment and itself the host itself because the uh, if host is having some problem or some problem which came out at later stage of their life then it uh, then uh, the uh, morbidity and mor mortality occurs next so some of the environmental parameter which are very uh, important for day to day cases the do alkalinity cot ammonia ph compression transparency but controlling this one in uh, con control environment say pond it is very easy manipulation is it is very easy but a environment which is having volume which is un, unlimited and uncontrolled so controlling that water quality is again a challenge so site selection comes uh, then it uh, it is very important uh, the stage of selection of site for the installing the cages so that time we have to consider the past present as well as future of that particular uh, site whether there will be any whether there was any which actually impairs the water quality in that area or there will be a futuristic development in that area which is actually going to impair which results in loss of the uh, investment actually we can say finally we all talk about money so uh, uh, it did not uh, it suit the our economic investment as well as uh, the uh, result in the form of uh, profit next
so some of the uh, diseases which are very uh, important in case of uh, um, uh, okay. if you see uh, there are bacterial origin diseases and parasitic mostly these two then comes to nutrition and and so we will start from first from bacterial diseases and then ma their management if you see there are uh, disease which is one as uh, aeromonas vero mostly aeromonas uh, hydrophila and veroni these are two responsible uh, causative agent for red spot diseases in fishes so uh, clinical signs will be very general type in the form of uh, uh some hemorrhages of body and will be a, a, a um, yellowish uh, if we cut cut down the, their uh, uh, stomach then you'll find that the right that, that will be a yellow in color and so there will be gills which will be may which may the uh, uh, color may appear from to yellowish that depends on the uh, uh, arrest of uh, particle uh, the suspended particles uh, comes after arrest of uh, uh, particle which are uh, suspended in the water water column so the color is slightly vary from uh, the deep red color of the uh, normal gill uh, this is one disease will come at the last of uh, the, the treatment management plan of the disease will go next so comes ulcer comes ulcer may be from the uh, injury then it will develop in the form of uh, deep uh, wound and uh, it it may continue there will be a secondary infection as a fungus which may continue and it will be a deep wound and that time it uh, gives a uh, very uh, impaired growth in the fishes next comes uh, columnaris disease Columnaris, as Sir was saying, T.J. Uh, Abraham Sir will explain. Here I will take very little time. So, columnaris, you will find uh, clinical symptoms on the back of uh, fish. That in gills you will find uh, abnormality in the form of discoloration, damages, and uh, caudal fin. So, the, uh, these are the things where we can find there is a clinical sign associated with. Uh, infection of flavobacterium columnaris next next comes dropsy dropsy itself we can identify by just seeing the fish which is having a bulge bulge stomach raised scales additionally uh, redness will be you will find then you will find that uh, fish uh, just upside down moving car uh, mo uh, just swimming uh, cork cor screw or sometimes uh, in uh, motion you can see so th this is again a disease caused by aromonas next uh, comes uh, red, red mouth disease actually you, we can identify very well that it starts from mouth mouth especially lip part of the mouth and then it continue over the body in very chronic stage of the disease you will find that it it just uh, you will find that the rotten part in the mouth area in this picture on c uh, uh, picture number uh, the second row of picture number second or third there is a, a where that uh, the parts are rotten totally rotten next so up to now I, I will discuss the disease in detail up to now whatever we have learned mostly we have learned about the uh, diseases which is, which is most common or frequently occur now this particular uh, uh, species is pangaceous which is widely cultured globally in and most suited species for cage culture in india as well so if we see there are some uh, diseases which are very much invasive as well as destructive to the cage culture farming so one of their diseases disease is edward sclerosis uh, which is edward sclerosis edward sclerosis and edward sclerosis edward sclerosis 
these two particular diseases how we, we can and one of the superficial additive there will be bulge stomach there will be loss of barbell then when we cut down cut down through the uh, stomach then there will be a small uh, white spots in their liver then kidney then uh, spleen these are some of the indication which uh, there is a infection of uh, edward siela so this a uh, this is a very common menans occurring in uh, uh, pond culture as well as uh, cage cultured uh, fungus next another problem you will uh, very often uh, the consumer preference uh, gets reduced is yellowing of the uh, fillets and farmers are very much concerned we are unable to export this uh, particular item in compared to vietnam uh, vietnam counter they are able to uh, just uh, export it to us and other countries uh, because their uh, color of their fillets are why not uh, produce a fish which uh, pangasus fish which are having yellow uh, white is uh, fillet so this is the uh, this is the case where actually uh, farmers and researcher have till now not able to put the origin of problem but some of the research says that uh, your feed natural style and some of the mixojones are collectively responsible for the uh, production of such condition where it is yellow so i will tell uh, some of uh, some uh, some of the instances where it gets yellow which can search uh, at university of alabama so there they found that if uh, pangasius is fed with certain type of carotenoids which is Uh, producing uh, which is having a yellow coloration more than it gives a uh, to fillets next comes if we are feeding a fish this is a voracious feeder so if we are giving a feed uh, for a certain time then we are stopping it or we are irre- making a irregular feeding habits feeding timing so it start start feed uh, start it get start feeding on uh, natural food available in the uh, cages so it will be uh, algae algae or some uh, phytoplankton so what did uh, they say where they concluded that that tribute that may uh, actually contribute in yellowing of this fillet so another pet out uh, especially uh, this occurs in the month of uh, uh, during the month of june to october october november they says according to their research they found that during this period there will be a flood time so flood there will be a lot of uh, turbidity in the water that time they consume some certain type of uh, uh, feed material naturally and uh, uh, near about uh, their cages as well as in pond so they actually contribute uh, to the yellowing of the fillets these are some of the example in winter you will find that fish get started uh, seizing their feeding uh, behavior so that time what happen uh, it is below their normal temperature of feeding so that time what happened uh, some days or some point of time there will be a normal temperature uh, regime that time uh, this just get uh, their uh, system uh, geology gets activated and they want food that time we actually we uh, generally uh, keep our feeding uh, feeding frequency as well as feeding dose low so they they unable to get uh, uh, optimum amount of feed to get the the completed new uh, nutrition completed so in spite of that they start feeding on natural food available in the system 
so that actually that uh, actually the, uh, that time the uh, that algal composition in that area actually uh, may contribute in the yellowing so there are some of the points where we have to point, uh, we have to take care and during that time we have to take care so that we can reduce or we can eliminate the uh, yellowing of fillet even though there is a uh, Uh, research thesis produced city in that also the, the, that uh, uh, that uh, phd scholar has unable to find out the particular cause for this yellowing of though he has done his research in vietnam which is the origin of this particular fish but he could not able to find out uh, the actual reason of fillet that's why they uh, they gave a term yellow fillet syndrome Be, uh, due to lot of causative uh, causative so these are the some of the uh, parts of uh, yellow fillet syndrome because this is very common next comes to red spot disease the aroma hydrophila only and uh, along with that veroni uh, also find out you will find that there is a lot of uh, um, mouth part along with that uh, there will be reddening on fins and so this actually uh, uh, again a bacterial origin disease so till now we have uh, studied next and we have studied about uh, bacterial disease then comes then comes how we can so first of all uh environment cannot be managed here because the uh, environment is uncontrolled and that's why we could not manage here so what we can do we can do one thing uh in taking the seeds from hatchery to uh, cages we should not stock directly uh, hatchery reared seed directly into it first of all there should be a impoundment or any cemented tank or any type of nursery near to cage uh, which is on land near to the reservoir but on land there it should be reared for a uh, 5 to 7 days so that it can acclimatize the local situations along with they they will be able to de stress themselves because the uh, the transport stress really need to be counter counter corrected at the time of stocking so here we cannot because the system both systems are very different pond pond the other is reservoir so that time we have to take care so while putting the seeds at land based hatchery near to reservoir a very good result in jharkhand there were uh, so many rampant mortality was occurring when uh, jharkhand government was trying to stock through farmers in various uh, uh, cages they were finding this difficulties to counter, uh, counter correct it but uh, uh, they were unable to do many at we gone we uh, try to solve it and we find that this is the one way we can really control and really uh, reduce the number of mortalities happening Uh, in the pangaceous uh, farming and during the period of 5 to 7 days we have to give a diet which is more fortified basically which is uh, that uh, gives more uh, uh, good uh, uh, immune response general immune responses so that time mostly if we give a multivitamins along with certain multi, multi minerals which actually uh, me. there are many brands uh, multi minerals available in uh, excuse yes, me please. all right now it is in the tile mode yes, you are please. not uh, having this presentation mode it is not in presentation yes, in mode presentation mode only yeah but here we are uh, we are able to see only as the tiles you please tile mode. in the tile then it will be visible Sir, you please continue. It is visible. Ah, uh, just clean it. Okay. Still alive? Yeah. Please clean it. Okay. 
No, sir, slide is not showing. Sir, not able to see your uh, template. Now it is. Hold on. Now it is visible. Yeah, it is continuing. Okay. So uh, we were at uh, nursery near two cages. So that time, uh, 45 feet, basically, uh, mostly including a multi-mineral along with multivitamins, which actually enhances the immune system. There are a lot of brands uh, uh, um, giving multi-minerals as well as multivitamins, which actually help the fishes to regain their general resp uh, immune response against uh, fish diseases. So that can, it helps them to regain their normal uh, uh, health condition. Side by side, we have to add a tiger in water. That may be a potassium permanganate, that may be a copper sulfate, that may be a aqua cleaner are nowadays available. Even CFX is also very good, giving very good result. If we are adding, there will the associated uh, microflora uh, like fungus, saprolegnia, uh, in fungus, saprolegnia, and aromanas, hydrophila, and veroni. These, these particularly actually uh, uh, give a lot of cage cultured species. So, that will be drastically reduced this load of this bacteria, uh, particular bacterial bacteria and, and uh, general parasite ectoparasites along with fungus will be drastically reduced or eliminated all over after we stop at early morning uh, nearly uh, 6 to 9 uh, this is the time uh, it can be stocked very well and there will be no problem at all so we have seen in jharkhand and they uh, they, they were able to control this problem uh, next comes then what what about uh, this is the common a uh, common way of prevent and control the bacterial diseases there will be a disease uh, occurrence or uh, infection after stocking. A reservoir is not meant actually for a fetus culture and not meant for adding a chemical which actually uh, gives arms to other sector too, human health especially. So that time we have to uh, especially exclude antibiotics. Uh, because uh, reservoir water is meant for two major purposes. One is for drinking and another for irrigation. So adding a chemicals which actually will resistance in a lot of uh, problems, creating problems in uh, certain part. So we, at that time, uh, we are Please mute yourself, Sachin Tareji, Sachin Raneji. Please mute yourself. So that time, we never recommend. We never allow. Even we never suggest uh, farmers to use uh, antibiotics in the uh, cage culture units because of this reason. Then comes what next? Then then. Uh, uh, um, sanitizers are available, basically of uh, potassium permanganate along with uh, um, uh, potassium permanganate, copper. These, along with uh, uh, um, adding, uh, there, there there will be a composition made with sand. Sand will be hand in the each each uh, each. 
each cage is unit of cages where actually it serves for uh, slow release of protection per magnet or whatever the nature we are giving that actually releases slow that able to control the infectious agent in and around the cages longer period of time with slow release and very minimal use of uh, uh, this protection power magnet or any sanitizer water sense it it helped a lot we have find uh, we have seen these two uh, uh, experiment in wetlands uh, in uh, in west bengal uh, nadia district of west bengal there, there we have provided it uh, all also we can add any sanitizer can be added which is not of health hazard that can be added and put into the bag it will slowly release and it will able to control the infectious agent in and around the uh, cage so this is another way to control the disease problem that if we can give certain uh, immune enhancer to feed that will be best way uh, because feed uh, especially pangasius uh, if we be uh, very well the feed so uh, feed loaded with uh, certain certain immune enhancing multi minerals or multi vitamins or certain uh, feed probiotics that actually value or add uh, strength to them that their immune system and help them to fight the certain infection very commonly when there will be season change next comes what we can do other than this so there is there will be the, when there is a uh, season change suppose it is a winter to summer or summer to winter or summer to uh, rainy season we have to give uh, if we are not having anything else at least vitamin c along uh, with their feed it gives a very good result and it it is able to control the general infection of uh, fungal as well as bacteria so these are the some of the common ways we can really able to put into the action to control the bacterial problem as well as fungal problem in the system next comes uh problem of uh, back 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 one slide back uh next comes uh, parasitic diseases and their management so there are few very few diseases which is of parasitic nature which is really so this is a very very well controlled by using a common sanitizer uh of so normal salt also rock salt also we can be uh, used with uh, Uh, sent the soil and it can be put into cages uh, hang into cages and it, it is able to control counter of this is another is gold dust disease it is also a, a, a disease which is present on the body surface of the fishes and it is also a, a spot like things but uh, difference is that it is uh, that the color is uh, golden color that's why it is called the gold dust disease control measure is of similar nature next next comes uh, crustacean parasites we, uh, may, uh, that is argillus and larnia another problem in chatisgarh one of the uh, cage culture unit in chatisgarh they say that some of them uh, some of the times they find isopods in their uh, gill pocket opercula inside opercula there is a isopod infection so what we suggest uh, one is that use a common sanitizer maybe a, a salt 
maybe a copper sulfate or potassium permanganate along with uh, another uh, along with that sometimes uh, huge uh, uh, antiparasitic drugs which of various brands high tech and many brands nowadays available in the market uh, some uh, biostat there, there are some companies they are uh, uh, formulated for very good uh, composition of uh, uh, anti crustacean para parasitic drug that can be able to kill that uh, parasites we have also drugs which is particularly made for Ar argulus and it has been very well tested in west bengal moina part of the west bengal and uh, odisha also and we, uh, recently we are uh, we have supplied this uh, particular uh, product into bihar for testing uh, into different geographical region till now we have got very good result we are hoping that that, uh, that will be a very good uh, product for controlling of this menans particularly per, per, uh, this particular successful for cage farming also though the rate of infection uh, of this particular uh, uh, these parasites are very less in cages very very rare condition we find out this uh, these two problems in cages so at least when there will be a such problem we can be able to test this particular drug into that so on contract uh, very well working in the pond system we we will see in the uh, um, cage culture unit also in future next next comes the mixojones diseases mixojones uh, is mostly uh, thalohelenas mixobolus these particular two genus are very well known that uh resulting in very very commonly uh, the diseases you will find there are that uh, you will find that gills as well as uh, body surfaces will have uh, white spots raised white spots module like structures on the body uh, which actually uh, of mixojone origin so here uh, i am just here uh, putting both uh, cage culture as well as pond culture uh, for for your information this is a, a parasite which is actually having there is an elites also bird also so to complete their life cycle they are uh, going through um, uh, various uh, organism various animal uh, animal organism so uh, we have to we putting a chemical to control directly this parasite is a temporary solution even though our product is working sanitizer is also working sometimes but if we are able to control any problem where analytes are well if we are able to control analyte or putting a chemical which uh, which, which, which kills actually analytes we will be able to solve the problem of uh, mixojones in the pond or this problem has not been reported in uh, cage culture but it, it is very common in uh, problem in pond culture which is actually rich in organic matter next comes black spot disease this is a uh, diplostomum especially uh, genus is posto diplostomum so okay, posto diplostomum cuticola again this is a multi cell multi uh, host parasite which needs to which needs various animals fish again a secondary host snails other bivalves and mollusks for uh, acting as the primary host and bird is a final host aquatic birds or uh, uh, fish eating birds are a uh, uh, final host so any of them we if we are able to collide cycle of this particular parasite will not get complete and then the uh, then the your problem will solved here 
if not we are put uh, we are many a times suggesting huge molluscicide or anything which can kill the mollusk by valves snails in the pond can help us to control this particular parasitic disease targeting this fish to uh, treat it is not a wise decision and it will be not at all controlled also we have seen uh, some of the uh, in uh, madhya pradesh gondia district of madhya pradesh then uh, jharkhand hazaribagh also these three, three places we have seen these problems are occurring but not getting solved at that time they are uh, we are suggesting go for uh, putting a bird net, a bird anti bird uh, nets and uh, use molluscicide during preparation of uh, ponds next comes uh, tapeworm infection very common is ligula ligula intens intestinal is and legal uh, and then uh, uh, diphyllobothrium these two are very common uh, tapeworm as well as cage cultured uh, problem uh, especially in cages why it occurs because water is totally uncontrolled anything uh, any animal which may be a land animal which may be a aquatic animal or even human fecal matter is coming to the system Uh, animal matters are I mean, animal fecal matters are coming to the system. That time, what is happening? Uh, lot of uh, uh, some some of the animals or some of the any, uh, human beings may be contaminated, uh, infected with this particular parasite. They are uh, early stages or larval stages or eggs are getting released into the system, and that is. going through but uh, the food chain to the feces and uh, actually uh, that that are causing a lot of problem so at least in uh, cage culture till now we have not recorded any uh, tapeworm infection of uh, but we have seen in jharkhand hatia dam like structures where there was a lot of problems of uh, uh, tapeworm uh, occurrence so we uh, we suggested them a lot of medicine but it could not be control, controlled one each species was having 16 to 19 20 20 numbers of small stage, uh, early stages of tapeworm these were not uh, controlled so that time we have to look uh, look into the their life cycle to control or to restrict the movement of such animals or such flow in the system which can really uh, in the uh, fishes next next term fungal diseases saprolegnia is very common and pangasius is very oftenly infected with uh, this cottonwood disease gill rot is another problem uh, the it has been very well discussed except antibiotics it can anything can be used in case culture also to control this particular disease and next comes eus has been reported eus is also occurring in the cage cultured species that time stifex is working very well uh, in the system a uh, dose dose is slightly for control calculating dose for cage culture is slightly difficult so that time we have to very careful we have to put into jute bag with uh, soil only so that there will be sustained release of a uh, drug into the system to control and eliminate the contaminating or infecting agent in the system next some of the miscellaneous diseases of and uh, nutritional origin uh, diet related and as well as uh, water quality if uh, our diet is lacking uh, especially vitamin c then we can see there will be a uh, uh, fish uh, fish body it may be vertical it may be horizontal that actually can be corrected with supplementation of uh, vitamin c supplemented diet next comes gas probably this gas probably is actually 
अगर वेयर वॉटर इज वेरी और सुपर रिच इन ऑक्सीजन एज वेल एज नाइट्रोजन सो दैट वाटर क्वालिटी इज एक्चुअली कॉजेज अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम बट दिस डिजीज इज एक्चुअली मोस्ट कॉमनली अकरिंग डाउन द डैम not outside the dam where oxygen oxygen super saturation is not occurring but down the dam when water is coming down from down from the dam there there will be lot of mixing of water and that causes a lot of uh, uh, problem in the uh, fishes a lot of gas bubbles can be seen in the body of fishes cloudiness cataract this and popeye these two are very commonly seen in fishes which got the origin of uh, mostly of, uh, vitamin b2 vitamin b2 uh, if b complex especially b2 no uh, b, b complex uh, if then it causes this, uh, such condition which uh, actually produces a uh, pop eye condition or cloudiness in the uh, eye so this can be very well uh, corrected with uh, supplementation of vitamin b12 uh, b complex so th these are some of the diseases which are uh, expected to occur or are occurring in the cage culture farming but especially in case of pangaceus edwardsiella and aromonas is the very common problem along with that fungus is uh, fun in case of fungus saprolegnia is very common problem uh, these are the three common problems very commonly occurring and we know that diets are very standard nowadays uh, if we are not making making at the farm then diets are very standard uh, of commercial nature so generally we don't see much problem of nutritional origin um uh, this uh, saprolegnia is very common problem in case of cage culture so these are the some of the uh, cage culture diseases thank you thank you so much if anybody is having a question yeah yeah yeah, yeah. participants please हम लोगों ने बहुत अच्छे ढंग से केज सिंगी पबदा सब का यहाँ पे झारखंड वेस्ट बंगाल के बॉर्डर पे मैथन डैम है वहां पे करके प्रोड्यूस करके और बेचा भी है तो इसलिए आप तो वेरी वेल कांटेक्ट कर सकते हैं हसन सर कल क्लास लेंगे आपको कल बताएंगे इसका मेन आदमी है जो कि इसके बारे में डिटेल बता सके हैं आपको
So it's in the fifth year and degrees. You know, what are some sort of my bar maximum for tenure to recommend? But for parasite, it's a right into the methylene bar. Methylene to go bar, you can go up to 30 minutes, no problem. Or even till you can go. And sir, uh, mostly in cages, red disease or uh, means U.S. or something, all the symptoms, mostly symptoms are the same, sir. Everywhere we have red spots or cancers. If you are going to, you know, diagnose differentially from symptoms, all the symptoms, it looks very similar. Okay. But in case culture, if it is fungus, it is mostly the Edward Silla. And second comes the Eromonas. Third comes the Fungus. Okay. So for Edward Sellers, the best treatment will be for antibiotic or Edward will be antibiotic for Edward Sellers. And uh, sir is saying that not to use antibiotic. Then what is this? Because main, it's, a, it's a very difficult situation. Because the reserve has been used mainly for the, the water is used for the DT process. So it's a very difficult, but still then uh, many farmers are using, you know, and especially <laughs> during winter, they are using the antibiotic oxidator cycle to feed, but never in water. Okay, or you can even bath treatment in the oxidator cycle or any other antibiotic in the boat, in the boat, in the, for the bath treatment. But do, after bath treatment, don't release that water into the that is our only question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other? Sir. Yeah, yeah, please tell us. Sir, in the large area, when the, when the pond area is quite large, sir, what treatment is feasible? Because, sir, we have to catch the... No, 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 no. no.
Sir, yesterday also one uh, lecture was left. Uh, yesterday, Dr. Sahu, yeah, Dr. Sahu, tomorrow will be there. So, tomorrow is full pack program. Tomorrow is the possibility okay. to have RAS also some. No, RAS, I, do, I talk to Sikha. Today only I talk to Sikha. Okay. Okay, in Sikha, Dr. Rajesh Kumar is doing RAS. He is associated with RAS. He is doing Marvel cultures there. Uh, but uh, he is actually a little busy with some other programs also. He has to another pro he has one program tomorrow, some project work, some presentation again. Monday also he has some program. So he won't be able to keep your slides. So I had a talk about 15 minutes with him. He told that it is the business of the same, it is the species what matters. Okay, but the, it's mainly the water quality management, filtration, etc. But uh, he won't be able to give time. I'm sorry that I cannot arrange, uh, but uh, no other persons are doing on the RAS. Is there any possibility we get some uh, inputs from Dr. Uh... Rajesh, uh, yeah. uh, but uh, in this training program, he won't, it won't be possible. Maybe later on, I can give his phone number. Yeah, yeah, that would be better. And Dr. Rajesh Kumar, ICRC for bonus, sir. Yeah. 7978-7978-07-28-9-1. Dr. Rajesh Kumar. Yeah. He is a senior scientist there working on the RS. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Maybe at some time, if you have some problem, you can contact me. Sure, sure. Okay. So, Thank so, you. Today, today, we are closing it. Tomorrow, we have to run a bit faster. Thank you. Okay, okay sir. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. I had a good session. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.